It's difficult to imagine the world without plastic, but is it worth the environmental cost? In the North Pacific, plastic waste has formed a garbage patch larger than Texas that continues to grow. And each day, millions of plastic water bottles end up in U.S. landfills where they take hundreds of years to decompose. 357 million tons of plastic waste will end up in landfills over the next 10 years. How much worse will the problem become? Could improving recycling efforts help? These are some of the questions nearly 6,000 high school students faced when they competed for over $100,000 in scholarship prizes in the 2013 Moody's Mega Math Challenge. One of the factors that we consider is our cost. This math competition uses a lot more application and real world solutions. I mean, in school, you open your textbook, you see some numbers, you essentially become a human calculator, but here you have to reason your way through it. And that's really interesting, I think. The M3 Challenge is organized by the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics and funded by the Moody's Foundation. The Moody's Mega Math Challenge, which is just about coast to coast now, is a way to expose high school students to math and science problems in the real world. And we're really pleased with the increased participation in the competition. It's really great. Previous challenge problems have focused on a variety of topics, including high-speed rail, a drought in the Colorado River Basin, and the U.S. Census. The challenge this year had two parts. The first part was predicting the amount of landfill in the United States in 10 years, and the second part was creating an optimal model for predicting the best recycling program for any given city based on a variety of factors. The prompt suggested that you consider both drop-off centers and curbside collection, and also to consider various dual stream versus single stream, wherein you recycle all things in one bin versus separate bins for glass and paper and metal and so on. The annual competition is entirely internet-based, and there are no fees to participate. On the challenge weekend in March, teams see the problem for the first time when they download it from the web. Then, in just 14 hours, they must put together a detailed solution paper and upload it back to the contest website. Initially, when we downloaded the problem, we were kind of awed that this is a lot. But we first divvied it up, and we first started talking about recycling, about how we should approach it, about what are the assumptions we're going to make. And throughout the whole process, even though we worked on our separate tasks, we would always bounce ideas off of each other, which was probably, for me, the most beneficial part of the entire experience. When we uploaded our paper at the end of the day, we were tired, but at the same time, I think we knew that we had gone after it and found a bunch of different angles. We tried a lot of different things, and for that reason, we were successful. Next, in a rigorous judging process, panels of professional mathematicians spend weeks evaluating hundreds of entries, eventually selecting just six of the teams to present their solutions at the competition finals in New York. I never would have predicted that we would have gotten this far. I mean, we worked really hard for it and everything, but there's, there's other thousand teams out there who didn't make it and probably just worked as hard as us. So I think it's really fortunate, and I'm really happy that we made it this far. Your team's paper was judged to be in the top one half of one percent of all the submissions. We took the integral from zero to 200 feet and divided by the 200 feet to find the average density of a landfill to be 60.9 pounds per cubic foot. And so given an initial proportion of people in a population who recycle, we go through our lattice and we make the same number of cells recycle. The more convenient the system, the more it will encourage recycling, which is our ultimate goal. Now with this probability function, we try and generalize the results for any area or city. As the capacity of recycling material facility increases, so does its efficiency. The extent of a green culture in a city is vitally important for figuring out how and which recycling plant to put there. This challenge is wonderful because it takes very talented students in high school. It shows them how useful math can be. In addition, it leads to them working together as a team. And that's what the real world is like. I think it's really exciting that one of the roles of a mathematician is to come up with models that people in government that can make decisions, make policies, can look at your model and say, what should we do? 2013 Moody's Mega Math Challenge Champions, Wayzata High School from Plymouth, Minnesota. The goal of the M3 Challenge is to raise awareness of applied mathematics as a powerful problem-solving tool, a vital contributor to society, and as a viable and exciting profession. This challenge has definitely made me a lot more interested in going into applied math and seeing what I can do with math and looking at the different careers that can be used with mathematics and the interdisciplinary ways that it can affect the real world around us. 
For this competition has really allowed us to see the intricacies of a society's problems and how math can apply to those problems in order to resolve them. And it really shows the power of math to help our world function and how it's in our everyday lives.